Good afternoon. It's indeed a pleasure to pre present to you this afternoon the preliminary results on a survey of the Lepidoptera of the Bahamas, which we uh, have been working on for some time, actually, since about 2010. But it really took off in 2014 when we received a National Geographic Society grant. This is just a brief outline of what we're going to be talking about today, why are Lepidoptera important, the overall scope of the project, the island surveyed, methodology employed, butterflies versus moths, preliminary results, and some summary and future plans. OK, why are Lepidoptera important? Or the pre presentations this afternoon have told you a little bit about why they're important, because they're an important part of the food web. And they feed other birds and other insects, et cetera. They are excellent bioindicators of the habitats and also associated larval food host plants. Some of these are very specialized, so they give an indication of what particular butterflies and host plants can occur there. Butterflies, and especially moths, are important uh, and, and effective pollinators. Most natural history enthusiasts are also introduced to uh, these studies through the observation of birds, butterflies, and other organisms. It's really important to get those students out there and have them, have them working on and, and trying to enjoy the natural world. Ecotourism is one theme that has reverberated throughout this conference thus far, and I'm sure will continue. And it's a wonderful introduction to the natural world, and such experiences have very low impact on the environment and are a means of developing programs for conservation and educational uh, opportunities. Finally, and not in the least, aesthetics. Live butterflies add beauty to the natural beauty to gardens, backyards, parks, and conservation areas. By planting native plants as uh, nectar resources, you can entice them to come in, and everyone will enjoy it further. Now, Again, educational outreach is most part of our deal. And before even the project started, we did a workshop at the College of the Bahamas here in Nassau. Took the students, we, we took them out into the field to collect moths at night. They had an opportunity to see the world around them and what occurred there in the, in the grassland areas, mangroves, et cetera, during a visit. And the other thing that we did is we also collected up at butterflies up at Orange Hill. Right now, there are 12 species flying on Orange Hill. And what they've done since we have been there, they've let part of their property go fallow. So they will encourage butterflies to come along. And these are some of the species, the blues and hair streaks, along with the skipper butterflies that we found there. Now, all of the yellow um, markings there refer to the islands that we worked on during this particular project, and all 12 were done during 2014. What we would do is we would take off, work five days on one island just before the new moon, and then work five days on the other island. We collect in the habitats, we would collect butterflies during the day, and then we would return in the evening to collect moths. Uh, there were some very tired people at the end of all of this. Now, the methodology employed, we were doing hand collecting with nets, and then also we were collecting larvae into special tubes in order to preserve them. Uh, here you see in the left-hand corner, you will see the, uh, um, the larva of a um, skipper butterfly. You can notice the little bit of a black head along with the collar here. And that is Ephyriades brunia, which feeds on croton as a, as a larva. You can see, also see some of the other things that we were doing. And this was with Ephraim down at the end of um, um, Eleuthera one afternoon. The other thing that we were doing is we were taking digital photographs of each one of the habitats that we were collecting. And we would do this in 360 degrees to be sure that we didn't miss a pine tree or we didn't miss some particular tree that might be present there. And the reason also for doing this was to take photographs of micro lepidoptera. When they are on the sheet and they're alive, there are some really interesting uh, characters that you see, and the coloration is different. Once they are dried, we lose some of that, and that was one of the reasons for doing that. The other thing that we collected with, of course, at night was with a black light, which you can see up here, and this was some, uh, some distance from where we were collecting with the uh, mercury vapor lights. 
see here. Yeah. Um, the reason for doing that is that some of the butterflies were attracted to the black lights. And you can see there's a wide variation of various species that you can collect up there in the, the hands give you an idea about the size. And this is just set up before dark, and we had to do that earlier. And one night we had 40 of these black witches on that sheet. No, we did not take them all. We got one per island after a while. Okay, the hypotheses. We had to develop some hypotheses as to what we were looking for. Uh, one of the issues that we all look for is where the origin of species in the Bahamas might be derived. And we believe primarily, of course, from Florida, Cuba, or the Greater Antilles. Species diversity and turnover in the islands was also of a um, uh, prime consideration, particularly of those that were close proximity to each other would be less than that of those of the islands to the north versus those to the south. And then pineland and coppice habitats, we figured would possibly su um, support a greater diversity of Lepidoptera than the coastal habitats. Now, we were rather kind of surprised at the latter one. Pineland and coppice did give us a lot of information. But we also collected some of these places were very close to water and uh, um, beach uh, strips. And we were absolutely amazed at the number of species that we found in some of these areas. Um, again, the northern versus the southern Bahamas, that was also another issue. And it really was kind of interesting. There, was, there were some things that we saw and we didn't expect to see, on, particularly on the northern islands. Now, with working with butterflies and other groups, there are a lot of variables with insular populations, and some of this has already been discussed here today. Weather is a prime consideration. This is sort of a domino effect type situation because you have to have the rains come at a proper time. They have to come at least about 10 days before the butterflies would start to emerge. You have the first flush of green that comes out. The flush of green on the trees and other vegetation has to do with not only the nectar sources, but it also has to do with available larval host plants. And then in some cases when you have prolonged drought, particularly in the southern islands, Great Bahama, uh, Great Inagua, and then also uh, Maya Guana, sometimes there's a prolonged drought and then you have a major problem there. These have the ability, some of the swallowtails have the ability to go for two or three years in diapause before they will emerge when the proper rains and the temperature come. Uh, toward the, this is Eumaeus atala, which is found on a number of the islands. Batis de Villiers is a, uh, has got that Andros and Cuban connection. And then here you will see the, the larva of Batis de Villiers, which feeds on Orthandros on an Aristolochia serpentiliqua. Okay, so those are some of the things that we had to consider. And then also, in some cases, when you've got hurricanes or tropical storms go through, one of the things that happens is the fact that some of these populations will be extirpated, and then they will have to be recolonized. In some cases, you know, they may not ever come back to that particular microhabitat. Now, just to give you a little bit more grounding here, this is Dionysia carteri. It occurs, on, again, on a Cuban um, um, Andros connection. A carteri used to be on a number of the islands in the Bahamas, but because of fragmentation of habitats, some of these populations have disappeared. Uh, right now, this is just an example of a hawk moth, and we've got 29 species of that, uh, those uh, found, and this is an example of um, a tiger moth, this is uh, Composia fetalissima. That's also found in Florida. So, you know, these are, these are interesting. And all below there, you're seeing representatives of a number of microlepidoptera. And some of these things, particularly this one, those eyes show up. But sometimes they're over, overscaled with greenish scales. So this is one of the reasons why we were taking the photographs. But you'll notice the size here. This is one centimeter. And these are till two millimeters. They're very small. This is a terraformed uh, moth, and you see the sprayed um, hind wing there. Now, I'm only going to go into three major examples during this particular presentation of things that we found. This is uh, Coranthus richmondi. 
It is a skipper butterfly that we looked for for a long time. And one time when Eric Carey was visiting over on uh, uh, Andros, we were working a Waldelia patch across from the San Andros airport. And there was one skipper that was floating around in there. I cannot tell you the number of hours that we spent there trying to find that thing over the years. Never did collect it. What happened this time was the fact that we were down on South Andros on a preliminary trip to work out the methodology and be sure we had it right. The upper row that you're seeing here, these are, there are two males here and a female. That's the upper surface. This is the undersurface. And they're a little bit different above and below. One of the truly remarkable things about this, these are skipper butterflies. They were once known as, theoretically known as moths. And the major problem about this one, it's got some reflective scales below. Never found that in a, a, a skipper butterfly before. Now, um, you can see here there's one uh, nectaring on one of the alamanda type uh, flowers here. But this is the, uh, this is the uh, food plant of it. It feeds on a palm, Copathrinex. And you can also see that the habitat is rather uh, dismal in the south end of Andros. The wind was howling that day. And we went down there a couple of times, actually. We went back a couple of times just to collect. We were collecting a number of things. And there's another um, skipper that looks very much like this that I've been working on. And it's a split spot skipper. It's Wallingrenia drurii. And we never knew that we had this series until we got home and started working on it. That's what, it, that's what part of the deal was. But it was a very interesting trip, and we got a lot of skippers on it, nectaring on a lot of different flowers. The next thing is a Saturnid. The Saturniidae are the royal moths. And in 2005, we started seeing this particular species show up on North Andros. And it was, it was rather interesting because we hadn't found it before. We thought it was a new record. Hampson in 1904 had already recorded it. So much for that idea. This is an omnivore. It has a, a caterpillar, which has got a lot of prickly spines on it, very chartreuse color, with a red and uh, white racing stripe down the later, lateral margin of it. And so, you know, this thing was not too much of a surprise in some respects. We, pr we figured that what had happened was the fact that somebody had decided to buy a plant and took it home as a treasure and probably had a caterpillar on it. But the most recent thing, Excuse me, the most recent thing that we found was Citheronia sepracalis. And this is the pine devil, so noted because it feeds on pine, Pinus and this Pinus uh, bahamensi in this case. And we got the male uh, collecting at night up on Grand Bahama. That was followed by the female on uh, Abaco the first night we got into the south end of it. They are uh, located along, usually associated with uh, beach strips as well. And in both cases, that's where they were. Now, a, uh, an undergraduate student had uh, already recorded this from a, um, a photo that appeared on the website, but he didn't have the voucher specimens. We've already got some other uh, morphological as well as genetic um, analysis in, in um, in progress, and it is very, very uh, closely related to the, this, um, or the origin is probably from the states in this particular case. It probably has been on those islands for a long period of time. Uh, the pine devil tends to be very uh, solitary, so you don't get, you don't see it very frequently. Now, the last of these is a true puzzle, because we've got we have a number of groupings of these particular moths that we've got them, you know, genus Acontia, group three, genus Acontia, group five. This is three, this is five. If you take a look at this, these are all from the Grand Bahama Bank. And we've got one little outlier here who comes from my iguana. But you'll notice that there are transverse bars, there are spots toward the base of the wings, there are all kinds of configurations here. These are darker than these, the ones that are from Great Inagua and Mayaguana, 
You'll notice the bands that come up to a point. Again, there's some no coloration. Different types, again, you've got some of these uh, transverse bands, but there's, there's a lot of work to be done. Now, I want to add to this little thing that we're looking at here to the fact that we have a lot of cryptic species that are in butterflies and cryptic species that are in moths. And some of these have been masquerading as the same species for a long period of time. We have found, for example, in the tropical wood nymph butterflies, there are 23 species that all look the same. You have to dissect them to find out what's going on. And typically what we have to do is to run DNA first and then go back and look for the morphological characters. So that's part of the deal that on this. This is going to take time. And there are 124 groups of these, 124 that we've, described. we've already identified the genus, but we haven't had a chance to work it through. Okay, no moth diversity on the Bahamas, 526 until 2013. And this was based on uh, voucher specimens, literature records, combinations of other things. We've added 65 species to the list and then we've got this 124 species groups that, that we've got to work on. So it's up to 551 moths as of 2015. Now, just for your enlightenment here, I want you to take a look at what we've found. The most speciose groups is on North Andros and South Andros Island. Grand Bahama doesn't do too bad. Um, over here on Eleuthera, they don't do too bad. But when you go from north to south, the dry islands here do affect the area. Um, one of our um, uh, field team, Mark Simon, has property down on Crooked Island. And during this trip, he went down and worked crooked uh, three times during that period of time, and then also did it last year before Joaquin. We've also added San Salvador to the mix, but we haven't integrated that information in there as yet. So right now, we're looking at 77 butterfly species that we collected in, in the um, already 551 moth species for a total of 628. So the situation there is the fact that also in other tropical regions, for every uh, butterfly there is found, there are 10 moths that are known. So we're looking at probably somewhere between 800 to 900,000, 800 to 900 species of lep total Lepidoptera. So remember, this is a biodiversity hotspot, so we have some opportunities here in, to, to work with. Our future goals will include an annotated checklist, which is well under its way. Uh, I'm also working on a butterfly guide right now. And we have some, uh, we're going to be doing one on common moths. Of course, there'll be descriptions of new taxa and revisionary studies. We will continue observations of populations with special attention to endemic species with re, uh, regard to climate change, but also invasive species. Florida has 3,100 uh, total Lepidoptera. Cuba has 1,500. And Cuba is way down, and it should be much higher than that. Life histories and host plants are still unknown for many species, and I'm also interested eventually in looking at the bigger picture as far as uh, comparative studies and biogeographic analyses within the Caribbean Basin. Thank you for your kind attention. This is my field team I want to thank here and all these other people who have helped me in the past. Thank you very much for your kind attention.